Thank you. And I am Daryl W. Perry, Libertarian for Governor. I, I want to do a little bit of uh, participation, show of hands. How many people believe that possession of cannabis should not be a crime? Yeah, I, I don't see, other, other than like people on the sidewalk that probably didn't hear me, uh, I don't see anybody that's not raising their hand. But yet, the corner office in this building still wants it to be criminalized. Uh, they have something that they call decrim that the first time it ever reached the governor's office in 2017, it was signed. But it still allows for criminal penalties for a fourth conviction. The punishment increases on the second and third convictions. It still allows for someone to be arrested and taken into the police station so that they can find out if you've had more than those first three convictions. If you can be arrested and possibly charged with a misdemeanor, I don't care what you call it, that is not decriminalization. That is criminalization by another name. If elected, I would work with the legislature to pass a full legalization of cannabis bill. And I'm not talking about what they originally did in Vermont that just said, you can have it, you can grow it, you can gift a certain amount to someone using, I don't know, psychic cannabis uh, people where you give them money and they find your lost cannabis for you or they sell you a really expensive t-shirt that has an ounce of cannabis wrapped up in it. No, 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 when I say full legalization, I'm also not talking about what they do in Massachusetts where it's heavily taxed and heavily regulated. I want everybody to be able to go to a corner store that is willing to sell cannabis and buy cannabis. I also want Portugal style depenalization of all substances. If you're not familiar with the Portugal style depenalization, back in 2001, the parliament in Portugal removed all criminal penalties for personal amounts of every substance. Personal amount in Portugal is 10 day supply. Do you know what having a 10 day supply would get you in New Hampshire? felony intent to distribute charges because you have more than what we think you should no, no no there should not be penalties for possessing a substance that you want to use bleach can kill you but you don't go to jail for buying two gallons at once why should you go to jail for having enough cannabis to last you through two weeks of quarantine because, believe me, if I was quarantined for two weeks, I would need some weed, and I think all of you would too. Now, I realize that a, a full no tax, no regulation is very unlikely to come out of the legislature. I realize that. So, I'm proposing a, a common sense compromise of putting in statute that our taxes must be at least 1% lower than the next lowest cannabis tax of any state in New England. That would once again give us that New Hampshire advantage. We already have people driving across the border from Massachusetts up here to go to our wonderful wine and liquor outlets that are right on the side of I-93. What do people do? They buy large amounts of liquor, and then they probably go to a fireworks distributor and buy some fireworks and then they head back home. <laughs> Why not have them stop at one of our wonderful New Hampshire cannabis dispensaries before they head back into Taxachusetts? The land of tax and more tax. Let's be, you know, that, that uh, metaphorical land of milk and honey and actually be the live free or die state and stop putting people in jail for possession of cannabis, possession of opioids. Yes, I realize that we have an opioid problem, but the problem stems from prohibition. You don't treat medical problems with prison. We don't throw diabetics in prison because they have insulin. 
We don't throw diabetics in prison because they have an insulin needle on them. Luckily, the legislature a couple of years ago did wind up removing penalties for trace amounts in a needle, which is allowing for the setup of needle exchange programs. But I, I realize this is very rare for a libertarian to say, those programs aren't being funded. What we could do, instead of funding Granite Hammer, or whatever the blue hell it's being called nowadays, because they change the name every year, let's put some money into funding a needle exchange. Let's take money away from the police enforcing drug raids, no-knock raids, uh, just you know, all, all kinds of victimless crimes, and let's set up something to where people that have a medical problem because of drugs can get help. We already have something that uh, the Doorways program, uh, Manchester has safe stations, but the hub and spoke system that they're using where all of the towns, Keene, Portsmouth, Berlin, they're all sending their people to Manchester. And that's overloading Manchester. Let's fund the program so that all of the doorway programs can operate as safe stations. And yes, I'm going to say defund the police and fund the programs that actually need funded so that people that need help can get help. We also have a problem with homelessness. And there's not a lot that the state legislature can do on that. Aside from, because New Hampshire doesn't have home rule. The legislature could, and I believe with the governor's backing, would wind up passing a state law saying that municipalities cannot have zoning ordinances that prohibit certain types of residential housing in a residential area. We have places in Manchester that are called R3 that prohibit the number of units and the size of the building. You, you can't go more than three stories tall. It's residential, but you can't have an apartment building there which, what does that do? It limits the housing supply, and it makes it to where creating affordable housing is at a disincentive to developers. We have other buildings where it's been a long-standing apartment building. A new owner comes in, they upgrade it to luxury apartments, and they push out all of the old tenants, thus creating a bigger housing problem. I saw recently that New Hampshire has a shortage of 10,000 housing units, meaning that if all of the homeless people or the housing insecure people in this state magically had money to pay rent, they would not be able to do so because the houses just aren't where the people are. Yeah, sure, you can go to Berlin, two and a half hours north, where there's very few jobs, and get a house very cheap. But unless you're able to work from home, and a lot of the people that are low income can't do that, basically you're just moving the housing insecure and the homeless to a completely different place where they have a completely different set of problems. So let's get the legislature with the backing of a governor to wind up prohibiting municipalities from creating the homeless problem that exists. Again, uh, there, there's a lot of other stuff that I could probably talk all day, but we don't have that amount of time. Uh, so I'll throw it back to Richard in just a second. Uh, if you want to learn more about me, head to the website darylwperry.com. Every Thursday, with the exception of this upcoming Thursday, I do a town hall online, darylwperry.com slash Zoom. The reason there's not one this Thursday, I have a gubernatorial debate hosted by the NAACP and the current occupant of the corner office in that building, he's not attending because he doesn't believe that we have a racial injustice problem. He doesn't believe that racism exists in New Hampshire. But if you look at the statistics of who's currently incarcerated, you'll see that minorities have about a five time higher chance of being in prison than somebody that looks like me. I would say that that's a problem. That is what systemic racism looks like.
So if you want to send a message, vote Libertarian, vote Daryl W. Perry, vote Joe Jorgensen, Spike Cohen, vote Justin O'Donnell, vote for all the other Libertarians on your ballot, and I would even encourage you to fill out an absentee ballot application, vote absentee, be safe, don't spread COVID, uh, because most of the poll workers are really old, they're in that high risk group. So the reason I'm voting absentee isn't because I fear myself getting sick. I fear being an asymptomatic carrier and getting one of the old people in Manchester's Ward 3 sick. And I don't want that on my conscience. DarylWPerry.com slash vote is where you can find out all the info on how to vote absentee. Get that absentee ballot application. And now I throw it back over to Richard.